Okay, so we finished setting the NetApp up in all the management duties. We can connect to it through the management console. We've assigned all the disks, got the aggregates going. The next thing we need to do is to set up the interfaces for the iSCSI connections. We can either do this through the user interface, GUID, or through the command prompt. And I always think it's a good idea to familiar yourself with the command prompt. So let's have a quick look at the interfaces. Now, the order commands for interfaces is done under ifconfig, ifconfig-a. This lists all the, conf all the network ports that are physically on the back of the NetApp, and we can see these correspond to the, fig the physical ports. Now, when we set up the system, we set up the management port to 20.1. You'll recall when we were setting up all the other ports, we just entered 0.0.0.0 because we were going to configure them at a later point. And that later point is now. Now we can see information around specific ports by doing and then the port name. And we can see here that it's got the packet size of the standard 150. Um, and that there's no IP address and that it is down at the moment, but it has flow control on full. Now we can configure each of the interfaces via the command prompt by issuing the IF, conf, the IF config command along with the appropriate parameters. And whilst I try and recommend people to use the command prompt to familiar, familiarize themselves as much as possible, setting interfaces is not quite that easy. If you make the changes through the command prompt now, they will work, however, on a reboot, those changes will be lost. This is because the changes are not written to the etc.rc file. When we did the initial setup, after that setup was complete, all the changes were written to that permanent persistent file. Now, if we do want to make that change, we have to go in and edit the file manually. And from this point, it seems rather pointless doing it through the command prompt and making a lot of extra work for ourselves. So for changing these interfaces, I suggest that we do it through the normal GUI interface. However, it's still important to be able to at least view what is going on for our interfaces through the PuTTY command, because if we lose connection to the GUI interface, at least we can see what a potential problem might be, such as we've accidentally put something on the wrong subnet. So we're back at our GUI interface for the management console. And we're going to configure the interfaces for SAM1. And we do this by selecting SAM1 Network Network Interfaces. And this will give us a list of all the current network interfaces. Now we can know from physically, the pictures of physically looking at the back of the box, there are a number of network ports. And we know that we've already set up the management port. There's the IP address that we use to connect to. And there's the partner in the event of a failover. We've connected a 10 gigabit uplink cable on port E0E. And now we need to configure the interface and the partner interface to make this work. Now it is best practice to make sure that the iSCSI network is on a different subnet to the management network. And indeed, if you try and put an IP address that is the same as the management, it, the NetApp will complain about it in the console. In addition to this, we will also VLAN off the iSCSI network, but we'll do that at a later stage. And this also helps prevent accidental misconfigurations in the future, along with adding additional security. So to configure the E0E port, we highlight it and select edit. You'll see from this screen there are a number of options. You'll have shared and dedicated. As the screen says, dedicated is only used if you do not want this port to be taken over in the event of a um, HA failover. Obviously, we do want the port taken over in the event of an HA failover so that the SAN that is still running can serve the data for the SAN that has failed. So we must select shared. In the IP address, we set the IP address that we've chosen from our planning spreadsheet. And this is going to be... 172.30.20.30.255.255.0.0. We're not setting a subnet. The partner interface is going to be partnered with the same port. So this is on a different subnet. The problem we're going to have is we're not immediately going to be able to ping this, but when we set up our VM host, we will putty on and make sure that there is a connection between the two. So we hit save and close. Now this is going to give us the prompt that we were talking about earlier in that if we 
have made this through the CLI, the command line, then it's not going to overwrite the master files. But we've done it through the GUI, so we're all good. And the last thing to do once we've configured this port is to enable it. Bring it online. We now have our 10 gigabit network card set up. The next stage is to conf configure this on the partner SAN. So under SAN 2, configuration, network, network interfaces, using the same E0E e interface, edit, shared, and from a planning spreadsheet, 172.30.20.31, and of course the partner interface is going to be the dot 30 address and finally we'll enable this and now we have our interfaces for iSCSI configured on the net app I'm James Sillett and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video if you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.